Kishi here with a video. Um, I have no idea how this is going to go. It's dark out and this car is grumpy, but this is my 85 Country Squire uh, sitting next to my 83 Grand Marquis two-door. Uh, it is like 7 o'clock at night, which is why it is pitch black out, because that's just how it is. Um, we're going to put my OTC enhanced monitor through its paces on this car, the 85 wagon, because I have received the special cable that interfaces it with its printer. Now, I know that uh, maybe it isn't ideal to just lay a bunch of stuff on top of here, but I don't really care. It doesn't matter that much. So we have the enhanced monitor, which is uh, the last of this series of code readers that OTC produced. Um, I don't know what you would really call that family. They were the OBD1 readers that uh, later in their life gained OBD2 capability. Uh, this cartridge is gives them up to 2002 OBD2 compatibility. This is not part of the kit. This is just one of your standard old cheap ones. Um, there is a printer, which can print such things as... Oh, focus. Focus. Or don't focus. Yeah, there you go. So, the cartridge has all kinds of cool stuff in it. Um, and now that I've received the cable for the printer, which, uh, in retrospect, I really should have hooked all of this stuff up before I was trying to record the video because now I have one hand. Now this guy needs uh, 12 volt. I think that uh, for simplicity so the cables I need are we'll use this guy and I need the Ford cable that ends like that. So we'll put it there. Uh, that's it for cables. It can also do GM, Chrysler, and some Asian imports. I don't know if I have any of the cables for the imports, but uh, they can be found, I guess. So for this, I'm going to use this to get power for my printer, which is going to leave me maybe a little short on room. It's not like they're booster cables, they don't need a lot of current, so clamping it on kind of goofy isn't really a big deal. So like so, I have my lighter socket, I'm going to take the cord from the printer, bring it over here, plug it in, the printer powers on, the printer prints the word ready which is, well, let's see if we can. In fact, it, it, it had already printed that earlier. So now the new ready is right there. Um, this is a, it's called a TA4FL connector. And that's why this cable is kind of tricky to come by. The printer is a DB25, but it only uses four pins. Um, I think it's a serial printer. It's the same printer as used in certain um, like truck way scales and that sort of thing. It's an NCI, I think it's called a 1220, but the OTC branded version doesn't say that it's a 1220 or whatever their model number is for it. So the printer plugs into the code reader, like so. Um, the code reader gets its power through the, the vehicle interface cable, so the vehicle interface cable ends in, uh, you know, that's a, that's a DB25 again, uh, goes into the code reader, like so, the code reader is going to have to, so my diagnostic plug is on the passenger side over here. 
course my battery is over here. Um, this cable should reach. What I'm gonna do is put the code reader kind of sort of here on the fender. How many hands does it take to do this? I've never actually read the codes on this car. I'm gonna put the phone down for a sec, uh, like that. I've never read the codes on this car. I know that it will have codes, um, especially related to the idle speed, because the idle speed is uh, out to lunch on this. I'm just kind of curious to see what it does. And now that I've got the printer, I can, well, print. So the diagnostic plug is, there's two, a little one wire one, put that in, put that, so our diagnostic plug's plugged in, uh, vehicle power comes through the alligator clips, so we're going to take this, I don't really want it to potentially ground through the test connector, so I'm hooking the ground first. I don't know if that's a risk of something that would happen, but it just seems smart. So, um, actually, before I do that, let's pop a cartridge in that bad boy. Uh, the one I've found has been pretty cooperative. Uh, the 1993 domestic Pathfinder 2. Pathfinder does not refer to a Nissan. It refers to OTC's troubleshooting software. It goes it's card edge, probably just a simple EEPROM in there. Goes into a slot on the front of the unit, like so. Then we give it some power. So uh, that is not correct for this vehicle. I was playing with it on my 86, so we're going to say no. Uh, make is Ford, so we press 2. Mm, 80, 85, so. Just off the top of my head, I know that's correct, because I know the VIN for this car, so. Uh, enter. Uh, engine VIN, 8. Maybe I don't know it as well as I thought I did. What's the 8th character? Oh, it's a letter. That's why. Eight vintage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, yeah, okay. Enter. Series fifth. Key. Five liter CFI engine is what it can test through this connector. We have a Ford 3 cable connected. Uh, so first we're going to play with specifications, which is the thing I showed you. We'll just hit three for specs, one for auto trans. Yeah, yeah, the sticker's always right, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it gives you the, now you can see this stuff on here. Um, spark plug, spark plug, gap, all that fun stuff. Now what I'm going to do though is hit F2. And then, so it says F2-1. So I push F2, and then I push 1, and then the printer starts going. This is a little impact printer with a ribbon. And if that isn't awesome, I mean, you know, different strokes for different folks, but there's something wrong with you if you don't think that's cool. Uh, so cool, we got our specifications, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's, uh, we're not going to do Pathfinder, because Pathfinder is kind of like, you tell it it has a problem, and then it tells you 
what tests to run in what order to narrow down that problem. Uh, if I just want to see codes, let's do one. Key OEO is key on, engine off. Key's in the ignition, but it's not on. The car is at operating temperature, just parked from a 40 minute drive, so it's, it's good and warm. Uh, we're gonna do the test. Uh, I don't know the difference between slow and fast codes. Uh, there's a, a meaning to this, I don't really know, so we're gonna do slow. Ignition is off, has been off for 10 seconds, yes. Turn ignition on. So, go. Turn key to run. It is uh, asking the computer to do what it does. Of course, everything this thing can do, uh, essentially, you can do with a test light. But... That actually sounds like a pass. It is. So that would uh, make me inclined to say that most likely the sensors are all within spec, so that's good. Now it's going to do the memory codes. I feel like 14 is, uh, I mean, it's going to tell us at the end, but I feel like 14 is that IDM circuit failure. Maybe it's 18. 22, don't recognize that. And that's, um, the, the flashlight is on on the phone, but this is, uh, it's backlit, which is kind of cool. So test is complete. Uh, let's review the codes. So we'll go to, uh, actually, you know what, let's, uh, let's do a running test. So we will, uh, uh, two. Ignition, it wants off for 10 seconds. The ignition is currently on because we just did our last test. Turn key off. And, uh, had about eight seconds to go. I feel like it's probably a lot less than 10 seconds is necessary, um, but, you know, let's do what it says. So that's about 10. Uh, well, actually, we're going to say yes, start the engine. So this car will not start without a little throttle, which is part of what's wrong with it. Engine is now running. The computer is probably going to get mad and might actually shut the engine off. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm pretty sure it's just to bring the engine up to temperature, and this engine is at operating temperature, so I'm going to say yes. Of course it wants us to shut it off. So I will shut it off. We're going to say, yep. And now it wants us to start it. So I'll just take my time getting back here to start it again. Engine is running. Now, in the past, when I've done self-tests, uh, brake pedal, steering wheel. I've done both of those things. Uh, in the past, when I've done these tests the old school way with a test light, um, I've actually found that you can make the engine stall if your idle speed is set wrong, and then you enter the self-test. And I have a feeling that might happen here but it hasn't happened yet, so it might not.
boost the throttle so it wants me to give a quick little Seven, I feel like it's something to do with TPS. But again, it's going to tell us. So. So that's our test done. Um, I'm going to shut the engine off, which will not affect our ability to continue playing with the code reader because it is plugged in directly to the battery. Uh, so car is off. And what we're going to do is review the codes. So three for review codes. Actually, is there anything else in there? Well, there's clear codes. We don't want to do that. Um, although I might have just done that. So what happens is uh, the code reader has read the codes and it is currently, until the power is disconnected, remembering in its own memory the codes that it found. Clearing codes, uh, there's something you do. I think you jump two connectors together, you ground one of them, I forget what it is, uh, while the test is still active and it clears the codes. Um, Regardless, I don't want to do that. So three for review. Uh, so we have a choice. Uh, this machine is capable of doing the cylinder balance test, but this car is not because it's CFI, not SEFI. Um, so we only have these two to look at. Engine off, found three codes. Uh, no, we don't want the on-demand first. Well. So that's interesting. Um, at some point, the map sensor went out of range. Mm, 14 is the, the PIP IDM circuit problem. Those were... Um, what were those codes called? On-demand codes. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe I've got a bad map sensor. It does kind of um, miss at certain throttle positions, so well, maybe. Um, so it's a system pass. Which is neat. Um, I don't know if it is possible for me to print the codes it has found. I don't think that I can. Does this record do that? That's too bad, can't print the codes. Um, let's go back to look at the running codes. To found five codes. ECT range. 
Uh, considering that the engine was at operating temperature, that means that sensor might actually be bad or out of spec. System lean... Mm. I think I put a new O2 in this, so I'm not really sure why it might be doing that. CFI has a tendency to run lean sometimes, but... So we've got an uh, EGR uh, position sensor issue. Wow, that's impressive. We have both the low and the high. Uh, okay, so I didn't goose the throttle far enough. Interesting. Hmm. So anyway, um, that's kind of how you use this thing. I wish there was a way to print the codes it found. Uh, it have two prints from the other screen, but it doesn't... Uh, oh! Oh-ho! Oh. Uh, So we just printed the uh, engine running codes, and let's uh, take a look at the engine off codes. So exit to go back. Um, what did I press? F2? And then 1. Oh! -ho. Sorry, in addition to being a, a Panther platform nerd. I'm also an old computer crap nerd, so this is, uh, this is fun. Alrighty, so, your, uh, your shop brings a car in for a customer, and you use your fancy code reader because your shop spent ten thousand dollars on it and uh, you can give them a little printout of their codes which they don't care about they don't know what that means but nifty and then we pack it all back up in its blow molded case and put it away for next time well, i hope that you found this as entertaining as i did honestly you probably didn't but who knows People like weird things. And have a good one.